And the next topic I would like to discuss with you is the implementation of this digital workflow in the aesthetic zone. What are the specificities that we have to take into consideration from a clinical standpoint? What are the benefits? What are the clinical benefits? And before getting into the heart of this topic, I would like to introduce you my patient. He's Uber. He's a 29 years old guy, very nice guy. And he came in my office because he had some hard time with his tooth number 21. And the tooth history is the following. He had a dental trauma in 2005 that led to the necrosis of this tooth. And this has been treated by that time by root canal treatment. So he came in my office in 2015 with some clinical symptoms, pain, pus, depth on probing, more than 7 mm in the mesial, more than 7 mm in the distal. And as you can see here on this cross-sectional view, we have an extensive bone loss in the apex area. So we referred him to the endodontist. We had a discussion. We had a suspicious of fracture, of fracture, but we decided to treat this tooth and to attempt to save it. He did a very nice job, and we had some healing. We had some nice healing in the area of the apex, but we were still having this depth on probing, and I was confirming the fracture. So this was the time where we decided, OK, and maybe now we should extract the teeth, and at least we have improved the bone situation. So thinking about the implant, we have to take into consideration, specifically when it comes to the anterior zone, the factors, the critical factors, the treatment decision. And already looking at this picture, we can see that this patient has a high smile line. So let's get a little bit more into detail. Of course, we have some favorable factors there. But also, we have some challenges. High smile line, patient is young, we have a high expectation, and we have triangular tooth. So, Considering the timing of implant placement and considering the immediate implant placement, we have to look at four critical parameters. Do we have a thick biotype? Do we have an existing buccal bone that is visible on the cross-sectional view of the convinced CT? Do we have an infection? What type of infection? We know that the chronic infection will not contraindicate the immediate implant placement, versus the acute infection that would contraindicate. And we have maybe the most important, we have enough anchorage of this implant to get primary stability. So here we had these parameters. Even though we still had some bone loss, we had these parameters and we decided to move on with an immediate implant placement that was combined with a conventional loading procedure. And we are now getting into our digital workflow and you have this overview of the eight steps that you saw before that are divided in four different phases, as it has been explained perfectly by team before. Preoperative planning, surgical, impression, restorative. And I think today we have some improvement in this workflow, the way it's organized, the way it's articulated in between each steps. And the, 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 of course the industry is helping a lot by partnering with some other company for 3D printing, milling, softwares, intraoral scanners, and this gets easier for everybody. But it's, it's not because we are starting to do digital. I think that we should get obsessed by this 100% digital workflow. We can get in and out. And here is an example. You see, here is the full digital workflow. But let's say you don't have an intraoral scanner yet in your office. This doesn't prevent you to do so. And I would maybe like to raise this question to Germain. Do, do you agree on that, that we can get in and out easily from this digital approach? I, I fully agree with you, Gary. And, and actually, that's, that's the way that most of these patients are treated. In some cases, they will be straightforward for a full digital approach. Some other cases, because different reasons, but uh, a, a hybrid model, conventional, digital is also uh, a, a very common situation. Yeah, I, I think we, we should still keep this flexibility within our office, even though we want to move digital, because we cannot do 100% of the things always digital. So let's get now to our workflow. We want to get some data from the situation, the bone situation, the bone reconstruction. We will get this Conbeam CT, and this Conbeam CT will be imported into our software combined with the second important data, which is the intraoral situation based on the digital impression. 
This information will be very helpful to plan the case, to understand the case, and to communicate with the lab and the surgeon and the prostodontist. So planning session. We always spend some time to plan the case, and you see here this is the raw rendering data coming from the CBCT, and now comes the segmentation because we want to keep what we need. Gary, may I, Gary, may I ask you, because I showed the segmentation procedure as well, and sometimes it's really hard to segment and separate both jaws, and you did a nice job here uh, for this planning. And, um, what do you recommend from a clinical point of view for the um, performance of the cone beam CT there? Yeah, I mean, this is very important when, when we get this file to, to be able to segment easily. So what we always do when we protocolize it in our practice is to give a cotton roll to the patient so we have an open bite. Because if the bite, if the lower and the, the upper were joined together, then it's very easy to get to the next step that you will see immediately which is the segmentation. So here it's very easy, as Tim showed it before, to select some specific point from the cone beam and from the SCL file. So always having an open byte will help for the segmentation process. So here we have merged this information. We have the relation with the bone and the soft tissue and the tooth structure as well. And this is the time where prosthetically driven implant placement virtually is made on your computer. And I think this is very important to spend time. We all know how critical the position of the implant is in the aesthetic zone, and we all know how it is even more when it comes to immediate implant placement. So we are here taking a lot of time planning our case properly with a screw access and a prosthetically driven implant placement. The next step coming is the design of the guide, and this guide will be designed as a tooth supported guide, so supported on the tooth structure, but that will integrate, of course, the information of your implant in the 3D volume. And now we have to export this file and to fabricate. And we have different options. We can send it to the lab. We can send it to a like printing center. But we have also now the possibility to have a chair side printing solution so you can get a little bit more efficient in the way you will manage your case and you will manage your team in your practice. And if so I may add, Gary, here, having the possibility of 3D printing your guides in uh, your office, it adds a lot of flexibility. Oftentimes, you decide to make a change um, on your uh, pre-operative planning, and having that next to your chair will allow you to reprint a guide or yeah, I mean, it gives you a lot of flexibility, and sometimes we all know that it takes time to send the file to the lab, and maybe a week after we have to plan for the surgery. Here you can be much more efficient, and printing a guide just takes an hour or so, maybe more, maybe less than that. So I think it's a, it's a great benefit here to, to have it for this indication. Um, you receive the guide. At the end of the print, you receive the guide, and you export the planning. And from there, you can start your surgery. You have all the information that will give you the right combination of drills and tools to use for your guided surgery. So moving now to the surgical steps, we'll be a little bit more into the clinic. So you see there are a lot of previous steps before we can really get into the treatment, but we will save time at the time of surgery. Surgical appointment will be divided into three specific um, phase, extraction, guided implant placement, and soft and hard tissue preservation. This is very important, I think, to be as less invasive as possible whenever we touch in the anterior zone the tissues. Bone, we want to keep this buccal bone intact, and we want to minimize the trauma to the uh, papilla and the buccal cervical uh, soft tissue area. So we take a lot of time to extract this tooth, and once it is done, we, we are then introducing this, the intraoral scanner. We're using the intraoral scanner to scan the, ho the whole tooth, to have the structure of the coronal part, but most importantly, of the root form that you will see we will be implementing in the design part later on. 
because in this case we had a lot of um, uh, infection. We had a lot of time, a lot of care to, to remove this infection, to clean the socket, to disinfect the area, and then we can go and perform our surgery. Right before performing your surgery, this is a very important clinical step that you check the fit of your guide. And you see here we have some windows that allows you to see the, the tooth, and actually this will help you to verify the full seating and the full insertion of your guide. This can give you a lot of deviation if you, don't, if you are not seated all the way down. So I think it's a critical point here. And as you can see, we have in the very lower part of the screen, you can see the, the protocol that you have to use. So the handle and the, and the drill. The length of the drill and the height of the handle that you have to use. The combination of both will help you to, do your, to perform the surgery and then you will be able to place this implant. So we have used here, unusually we have used a very long implant just to get stability into the apex area. And in order to stabilize the, the, the soft tissue and the bone situation, we have performed first a xenograft material into, into this socket to maintain this um, buccal contour, and you can see that the implant position was, is very important from a prosthetic point of view, but also from a surgical point of view, because we want to keep these two millimeters at least for um, this graft material. In order to improve the soft tissue situation, we have combined this bone preservation with a free gingival graft, a socket sealing technique, as it is called, just to close the socket and maintain the soft tissue volume. After three weeks, we have an ongoing healing that shows the integration is in process, and we have an improved, a nice situation of the soft tissue at six weeks that will be very helpful later on to manage and to guide at the time we will perform the provisional uh, restoration. So let's get now into the second stage surgery and the impression time. And you see, in that specific case, we initially planned to do a digital impression. And because we have this thickness of tough tissue, because we improved it, that we were pretty happy about it, actually we faced a technical challenges. And this is the time where we had to go with a conventional way because the tip of the scan body that is supposed to be scanned was not very identifiable, was not very visible for the scanner, intraoral scanner. So this was the perfect timing to go conventional, and it's not changing anything in your treatment, beside the fact that you will send it to the lab, that he will pour a model, and he will scan it as an extraoral way. He placed it into his software, and now we have to design the provisional restoration. And there are two parameters to design here. There's the transmucosal portion that will be independently designed from the coronal portion. And coronal portion, with the technology that we have today, and I think you will agree with me, is that we can just replicate things that are natural. We have the contralateral tooth, number 11, so we'll just identify this tooth, outline this tooth, and duplicate it. Would it be the, the way, uh, Vincent, you would do it today, or...? If I have this contralateral tooth that has these characteristics, I would absolutely want to mirror it. Abs no, no question made. Yeah, I think, I think the reproduction of shapes based on the software today is really reliable and something that we are implementing on a, on a daily routine. So we design, we duplicate this tooth, design the uh, number 11, and now it's time to design maybe the most important part, the soft, the soft tissue part and the emergence profile area, the transmucosal area. And we had the root, we had the root structure, so we just implemented, merged this root structure into our planning software, into our intraoral situation. 
And here, I think it doesn't give you the whole design, but it's a, a, a reference that helps you to, to design these transmucosal parts, especially on the distal and the mesial. I would say that in the, the buckle, we know that we want to have a little bit more space. And I know, Tim, that you have published on this. And uh, would you comment on that? Do you agree with Yeah, I think statement? it's really smart. If you have the chance to, to capture the information of the original tooth and then to copy it or to mimic it, that's the best way to reproduce something. Yeah. So we're re really using the nature that we have to copy it and to design uh, our provisional restoration. So full monolithic is very interesting, of course, in the posterior. It's very interesting in the anterior when it comes to uh, provisional restoration as well. So here you can have a lap side milling. You could have a chair side. For sure, this is a good indication for chair side milling as well. And definitely go for uh, full contour PMMA material restoration. And this crown can just be stained e either by your lab technician, either by yourself if you, if you enjoy it. At the time of insertion of the provisional, you see here that we have a lot of compression, and this is something that is normal because the tissue are following the shape that you have given to this transmucosal portion. And after one week, you already have a nice healing and a, a nice guidance of this soft tissue. So we just wait a little bit. The implant is going well. The, the soft tissue are in the right position after three weeks. And at this time, we moved on to the final restoration and final digital impression. So one of the great benefits here, I think, the intro scanning can allow you to scan different situations. You want to have the very initial situation you can, the provisional, the emergence profile, the implant position, and all this information can be merged together into one same platform. So provisional restoration, the patient comes in, and then you will right away you sit him, and you can just scan the patient. And I think here, you can see we were, I was very happy to be able to test this new trios from tree shape that was very ergonomic. The fact that it was a wireless device is very, very comfortable to use and, and very easy. And, and this is the first information I get before I take my digital impression on, on the implant. The second one, the emergence profile that we have been taking some time to design at the provisional stage, we just want to maintain and to freeze the position of this um, soft tissue. So here it's a great benefit, and I think it's, it's an important move compared to the conventional situation where we, still, we know how complicated it can be to duplicate sometime this emergence profile. So here, immediately after I have removed the provisional restoration, I will scan the patient. And now I have freeze. I've frozen the, the situation of the soft tissue. Implant position is the last but not least step. We will replace the, the, 3D, the, the 3D position of the implant into the software. So we place this scan body, and you see now, as compared to the provisional time where the tissue were not guided, that we can easily identify this scan body because the tissue has been shaped by the provisional restoration. So once again, we have these three information, and these three information will be superimposed into one same digital platform and will be very helpful for analysis and for designing the final restoration. So let's get to the design now process, and there is three three stage, three part to design independently again. The selection of the abutment, the emergence profile, and the coronal portion. And looking at the abutment, and I think you, you raised a very good point, Vincent, before, because now we have specifically in the interior zone where we have sometimes very uh, high offset between the platform of the implant and the papilla, we need to have a little bit higher gingival height for these various base. Um, 
abutment. And I think it's a great innovation that they just recently introduced these three different heights for this um, um, for this abutment. And I, I, I think uh, Herman, it's we, we have worked on that before, and I think it's it's a great. Uh, benefit the fact that we can be a little bit narrower also in this transmucosal portion to allow for more soft this, tissue. This is very much welcome, uh, particularly in uh, making the transition between the Im implant position and your uh, prosthetic emergence profile, where you want to be slim enough not to put too much pressure on the soft tissue, but towards the uh, uh, cervical aspect of the crown, you want to reach uh, a more anatomically um, um, oh. adapted design, as you show it. This is a, a, a very good option for yeah. restoring yeah. the cases. So yeah, I, I, we totally agree on that. And, and you see here now we are moving into the emergence profile. And I think this is exactly what German just mentioned, that we have in the, in the deep part, in the closest part to the bone, which is the most critical one, we have a very narrow uh, design of the abutment. And when we get a little bit more to the cervical area, we are following w the, the root form a little bit more. And, and here we are just copying again the design of the provisional. There's nothing more to do. It's a very easy step at this stage. The kernel part of it, it's we want here to combine biomechanical strength and biomechanical properties of the zirconia with optical properties of the layering technique and the talent of our lab technician. I think it's very important today to have this lab technician to layer to get like the very aesthetic part. But in the meantime, we want to have enough resistance. And this is why we are now having this um, uh, buccal reduction. That is actually a minimal reduction, less than one millimeter. And we see the evolution of the material is going quite uh, quick, and I would like to raise a question to our lab technician here. Would you think in the future we, we may see some full monolithic uh, restoration in the interior zone? I guess the moment you have to match a single central, we still will end up uh, having a big improvement by an additional small veneering uh, based on the small cutback that you do. It still the ceramic is, is, is well protected. The chimney of the screw is protected by the strong zirconia, but still you have the beauty of the surface texture that the technician can deliver with the yeah. veneering ceramic. Yeah, this is so the same experience I, I have as well so far. So we received this crown milling restoration lab side or centralized milling center, buccal cut back, and zirconia material. And again here, because he needs to layer, because our lab technician needs to layer, we will need to have a printed model so he has the reference of the other two structure. Our lab technician is finalizing the case by doing this uh, very technical work and very technique sensitive layering technique. And he is able to deliver a nice crown and what I would like to mention here is that if you look at the gingiva on the very right of the screen, we almost see no compression because we just completely reproduced the design that we have uh, made at the time of provisional. And this is this consistency in shapes reproduction that is really interesting in the field of digital uh, technology today. Buckle contour stability is also very interesting, I think, it, because prosthetic management as well as surgical management at the time of uh, surgery, we could uh, maintain this nice buccal contour. And we had this final result that was interesting, nice uh, integration of the crown. And um, the patient was very happy, as you can see on this very last picture. So I was also very happy for him. Um, in the aesthetic zone, if we have to, to remember, let's say, one point to conclude on each step, I would say that in the diagnostic preoperative phase, the communication is key. I mean, this, all these computers help to communicate with the lab technician, with the prostodontist, with the surgeons, and also with the patient. So I think it's a really great benefit to also understand the case altogether. Um, the predictability of the position of the implant when it comes to the anterior zone, we want to have this 
very consistent, predictable, and reproducible position of this implant. So here, the guided surgery is very helpful. Having different digital impression that we can combine information is also a very nice possibility here. And finally, I think the, the reproduction of shapes and, uh, and, and forms using these softwares and milling machine is very interesting in that uh, entire zone. So I would like to thank you very much for your attention and to thank the team and the people that I've been working with.